Thank y'all so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here, but I'm sad. I might be the first person who sort of reads while I talk, so I hope y'all will forgive me for that, but this is an exciting thing to be a part of. I, I, it's my first time, and I think it's great. I should have brought my children to get some learning in. Um, so my name is Tracy Fontenot. I graduated here from the UTL Science Center back in 1996 with a degree in physical therapy. Um, being an alumni from the school means a lot to me. First um, of all, if it weren't for the Health Science Center, I wouldn't have met my husband, like someone else spoke of earlier, and he said I needed to put that first in my speech, because he thinks that was the most important part, so that's where I put it. Um, uh, he, I met him when he, I was in the class above him, and he came in as a new student, and we had to arrange a scavenger hunt for his class to help them learn all the locations around the school, um, and we met, and the rest is history. We've been married 19 years and have three beautiful children, so that was, that was exciting. Um, the other thing is this university provided me with the tools I needed to fulfill a lifelong dream of doing what I love. Um, the experience I had through my years here was one of total support. Um, even more importantly than that, the faculty and the program encouraged us to think out of the box. And I think that was really important as physical therapy students. We were very into what are we supposed to do? What exactly are the guidelines? What exactly you know, does the research say? And all of that is super important too. But they also always advocated for us to also strive for more and look for different solutions. Um, that we can always discover something else that might not have already been discovered and to keep striving for that. So they always said, look outside the confines of the book or the computer. It was a book back then, but now it's the, outside the confines of what's on the computer screen. This model of teaching and what I learned from that really laid the groundwork for me later being the co-founder of a nonprofit organization that I will be, so I will be forever grateful to this university for that positive experience. I'm a pediatric ther physical therapist by background, and I worked primarily in the inpatient, outpatient, and PICU settings at Methodist Children's Hospital. Early on, I became an advocate for kids being healthy with exercise and proper nutrition, and I helped start a fit kids program at Methodist Children's. I work with children with physical disabilities mostly, and some intellectual disabilities, and early in my career, I realized one thing. These patients we were seeing that were coming to physical therapy didn't get to be the children that most children get to be. They didn't get to do sports. They didn't get to run around on the playground and participate in field day and bike rodeo like most typical children. There weren't any dance classes or baseball teams or anything for these children to do outside of physical therapy. Truly, um, I was in my 20s at the time and I was probably their closest friend that really you know, talked to them and asked them things about their life and their day. So a colleague in mine um, got together and we said, this, there's got to be more. There's, our patients are telling us, I wish I could play soccer like my brother. I wish I could be a cheerleader like my sister. Why isn't there something that I can do? Um, I walk with a walker, but isn't there something for me? And there really wasn't. So um, Casey Warnley and I, she was a physical therapist also and coworker, we set out to change this. We started a baseball team with 10 children with 10 of our patients. We said, come out on Wednesday evening after work, and we're gonna go to the Health Science Center, which is what it was called at the time. And we got some PT students, we got about 10, and they came out and volunteered. And that's how Kinetic Kids was born. That was in 2001. In 2002, we had 20 kids come out to play baseball. Um, and we realized that this is a wonderful adjunct to physical therapy. Physical therapy is super important, but so is them getting to be kids and getting to do what their typical what typical peers get to do, what their brothers and sisters were doing and their friends were doing. So for the last 16 years, my primary focus has been on providing sports and recreational opportunities to children with special needs. Kinetic Kids now has over 230 programs a year, like gymnastics and baseball and dance and CrossFit and wrestling and 17 different sports. And we have both classes at the recreational and competitive level. We serve over 2,300 athletes a year. In the past 16 years, we've seen one of our athletes crowned Miss Wheelchair America. Another athlete has fulfilled his dream of being in the Paralympics, and we have several more that are following in their footsteps. We also have witnessed hundreds of children and families find joy, companionship, confidence, pride, as child after child has the opportunity to fulfill their dream of being on a team and playing sports with their peers. Many people in this community come up to us and say how grateful they are that we have started Kinetic Kids, but I always turn this around. I'm grateful for the community and to get to do the work that I'm doing. First of all, for the children with disabilities who never stop striving to be their best. 
sorry, who may get discouraged by the boundaries placed upon them, but they never get themselves out of the race. Also for the parents whose symbol of dedication and love are forever inspiring. All of our staff, our volunteers, our funders, our community sponsors, I have such gratitude for all of them for what they do, for they also feel that children with disabilities are important and that they deserve a chance to experience the joy and excitement of being a part of a sports team. And for those of you who are students today, my message to you is this. Remember the ripple effect. Your actions are like pebbles thrown into the water. They create ripples. Do you want those ripples to be positive ripples or negative ripples as they cascade out? Your actions determine the course of those ripples. And I'll also tell you, keep asking questions, keep seeking better ways to serve your patients, your community, and your loved ones. If you happen upon an idea that will help bring positive change to anyone, let that be your seed and let that grow, even if it takes time. One day that seed will grow and that one change can, make, can be your positive ripple effect. I'm grateful to this school, not only for the education I received, but the opportunities that laid the groundwork for what I do today. And I thank you for inviting me here. <laughs>